time to facilitate and answer any questions that you may have. And so that's why I asked Ray if, if y'all were in interactive class, if y'all were open to asking questions, or if he wanted me to teach the whole time and kind of see how things went. And I'm, I'm good either way, but, uh, uh, but I'd much rather facilitate and just kind of give you an overview and then you just hammer home the questions if you have some, okay? I'd be glad to answer them. Basically, uh, Jennifer and I moved here from North Carolina about eight years ago. Yes. Uh, we moved. Uh, <laughs> yes. North Carolina. All right. So uh, and we we moved up to Woodbridge, Virginia, and got got um, uh, became members of Stafford Baptist Church. Uh, um, and not long after becoming members of Stafford Baptist Church, we then uh, um, were we were called out of that church to go help plant a new church up in Dumfries, Virginia, called Pillar Church. And um, Basically, about 20, 25 uh, people came out of Stafford Baptist, kind of a healthy way to plant churches, take people from, uh, take a small group of, from one body and plant to another so you can plant, usually committing to uh, six months, a year, a year and a half, things like that, or as, as shown by us, indefinitely. <laughs> um, so, basically, we went and started Pillar Church in Dumfries along with the worship pastor who was being called to plant the church named Clint Clifton. Um, since we planted that church, we have planted five new churches. One in Indonesia, in Indonesia, Indonesia, one in Iceland, uh, one in Norfolk, one in Locust Grove, and one on Quantico, kind of specifically reaching the Marines that are there, and also that little city, little town that's inside of, of the base of the of the, um, the Marine base there. And so we are a uh, just to give you a little idea about what we are, who we are. We are a church believing the Great Commission pertains to churches planting new churches. That's how we believe the Great Commission is lived out, is by putting new churches in, in certain areas. So if you were to walk into our church, you would not see uh, or walk into any of the churches that we have been a part of planting or, or out of Stafford Baptist itself. You would not see more than 150, 200 people in any one of those churches. But if you were to take our churches as congregations all around, um, uh, as a whole, we're running about 800 to 1,000. And so you can see uh, uh, the... the importance of being able to spread out the seeds of the gospel to all these different areas and see and as our churches as each individual church grows then we start to see more and more people come to Christ more and more people in our churches and that's how we believe the best gospel growth comes is by planting new churches and so we have um, essentially started Locust Grove a couple of years ago uh, Jennifer and I went out and we uh, have been in the process of gathering core members to come and participate with us come alongside with us <coughs> and so um, if any of you are familiar with Nehemiah 1, Nehemiah, Nehemiah spends about four months in prayer, planning and praying for um, what he's going to do to the city of Judah and uh, when he gets ready to rebuild it. But he's also asking for favor. He's praying for favor from God for when he meets or when he um, uh, gets an opportunity to talk to King Artaxerxes about going back to Judah and rebuilding the walls that have been broken down for 140 years since captivity. And uh, basically what happens is God answers his prayers in remarkable ways. He answers his prayer in the fact that he sends him there. Not only his, his main right-hand man, Nehemiah, the king sends him back to Judah for not for just one year, but he sends him back for 12 years. Not only that, he gives him right of passage to be able to travel through all the areas. And he gives him timber to be able to rebuild the city and his own house in, inside of that city. And so we see where Nehemiah's praying and planning and fasting really worked out into his favor about um, really asking God to do miraculous things for him. And so that's basically what we're doing. That's why we're asking you so fervently to pray for us as we begin a process of praying and planning. Now, we've been doing this for about a year and a half, but we are getting ready to launch out at Easter, at Easter, April 24th, I believe is the date. And so we are going to, right now, we meet on Sunday evenings at 5 p.m. over in Locust Grove area. If any of you are familiar with, um, uh, how many of you know where Locust Grove is? Okay, Locust Grove is down is basically, for those of you who don't know, it's basically directly between Fredericksburg and Culpeper, down where 3 and 20 meet. So if you turn left on 20, we're at a place called Locust Grove Town Center, which is uh, there's an Exxon there, kind of give you an idea. We meet in a place in a coffee shop there called Coffee Would It Cost that we created. And so we meet there on Sundays at 5 p.m., very strategic in that, so we want other people to join us from other churches to be able to come and see what we're doing, also to help us do some works. But we're getting ready to go to Sunday mornings starting in... Um, January, so we're kind of getting ourselves geared up for launching in um, in, uh, in April. Okay, and so we also um, our our main things that we are is we are a gospel driven church. We believe in the gospel. We believe in the full authority of the Bible. Uh, we're also a Southern Baptist affiliated, and uh, we are also a um, 
church that plants new churches. We believe in, in the church planting new churches. So we'll, we're already looking for new opportunities and new areas where we can eventually plant another new church uh, and maybe a year or two down the road. And so we're also a mission. We're on mission for mission. We believe in mission work. Uh, we have an ongoing mission work in Indonesia. That's our main place where we go every year. We've been there five times. And um, we have uh, essentially last year we went. We took some money with us. The dollar, the American dollar, goes a long ways in Indonesia. Um, the average income for any person on, on, in Indonesia is about a dollar a day. So you can imagine living on 365 a year. It's not very much money. And uh, we couldn't do that here. Um, but uh, they live on a dollar a day. So our dollar goes a long ways in their economy. We, we took about $6,000 with us uh, uh, last year, and I uh, went over there and we were able to find someone who, um, uh, a, a wife who was taking care of about 25 kids, none of which were her own. Uh, she basically had an orphanage, and her husband had gotten killed on a moped. And so what we essentially did was we built an orphanage for them. And so we had the money, we, we, we hired a contractor to do the work, and so in, in 12 days they had almost the whole orphanage built by the time we left. Now it's very, uh, uh, so you can imagine the, the, the living in um, the early 1900s, late 1800s, pretty much how they do all their work. They don't have any of the um, new, newfound tools, no, no drills, nothing like that. Pretty much all, um, all open. How did? All, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, yeah, old hand tools. Yeah, <laughs> uh, definitely construction, not the way we know it. So uh, it was really neat to see how they did things, how they, their ingenuity and their creativity and how they do it is, is amazing. So and they were accurate extremely accurate and so uh, they know how to figure out how much concrete to have, how much to add to it, water, things like that and so it was really neat opportunity. Um, and so anyway we, we helped them build that orphanage and we went back this, this past summer for two weeks and uh, kind of shored things up, got things together and uh, finished off the building and uh, we got somebody in there to take care of that, uh, that, that orphanage full time that we're going to pay and we pay for all the food and things in that orphanage. We, we raise the money, we, we take it over there and we leave it with a missionary. So that orphanage is taken care of. Those kids, they get fed a meal three times a day because of the money that we're able to raise and the mission work we're able to do here uh, in the U.S. And so that's a, it's a really big deal. So one of the main things that we try to do with the orphanage is, is to be able to bring those kids in so that we can send them back out to the villages that they came from. So basically we want to send them back home. That's what we want to try to raise them up to do. We don't want to raise them up and send them out uh, or stay there in the orphanage. And um, we want to send them back out. So this, uh, we also got some that are a little older. Um, if you don't know a trade in Indonesia, you're not going to make it. And so we took with us this past time an, an auto mechanic. And so we taught them. We, the last year we were there, we bought them a truck also. So we 